It's good to be together. So if you missed it when I announced it on Sunday, we're doing a little something called Testimony Night tonight. And actually, this is Testimony Night Part 2. We did this back in May, and we really loved it. We got a lot of good response. It's good to hear. Um, actually, we as staff get to hear a lot about what God is doing in people's lives. Um, and you don't get to hear a lot of those stories. So we're really excited to share some of those tonight. Um, before we do that, just to kind of intro testimony night, I wanted to read a little bit of scripture, and I apologize I didn't put it on a slide for the screen or anything. But this comes from 2 Corinthians 4. Um, and this is right after Paul is saying that we're like uh, jars of clay, just holding the goodness of God. It's not something that that is us, it is him that is within us. It says we're pressed on every side by troubles, but we're not crushed. We're perplexed, but not driven to despair. We're even hunted down, but never abandoned by God. We get knocked down, but we're not destroyed. Through suffering, our bodies continue to share in the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may also be seen in those bodies. Yes, we live under constant danger of death because we serve Jesus so that the life of Jesus will be evident in our dying bodies. So we live in the face of death, but this has resulted in eternal life for you. But we continue to preach because we have that same kind of faith the psalmist said, had when he said, I believed in God, so I spoke. We know that God who raised the Lord Jesus will also raise us with Jesus and present us to himself together with you. All of this is for your benefit. And as God's grace reaches more and more people, there will be great thanksgiving and God will receive more and more glory. That's what we're doing tonight. We're always pressed in from all sides, but it's so that through God's faithfulness, through his goodness, we get these amazing stories of how he's moved in people's lives. And so at what we're doing tonight, it's not just even just to get together to share some cool things that have happened. We're actually joining in a legacy of generations of people where God has moved in their lives and they have rejoiced to the multitudes and the goodness of God has been seen and people are filled with gratefulness and thankfulness. So I'm excited to hear some of your stories. Uh, just like last time, we just opened up these two microphones down here. We would love for people to come up and share at these microphones. If somebody is sharing and you want to get in line, these front rows are a great spot for you to come down and just get in line. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, Rose fam. So the question is, who's going to be brave and bold and lead us off tonight? I'll wait for it. Let's go, Pastor Bruce. Sorry, I set those for my height, so feel free to adjust. No problem. Yeah, well, I have leukemia, and my leukemia has been, you know, perfectly under control. I mean, and I do mean perfectly. Mm -hmm. um, my doctor keeps saying, if any doctor in the world looked at your blood work, they wouldn't have a clue you have leukemia. Wow. But, <clears throat> of course, I got this other thing that started, and it was um, not a rapid heartbeat, never that. It was always irregular. So it would, I would skip a couple beats and then beat, beat fast a couple times or skip a beat and beat fast, you know, and just re very, very weird. And when I went down on vacation to uh, Florida, there was never a day where I didn't have it the entire time. Um, and the, the doctor was getting concerned. He, he told me that he was going to set me up with a cardiologist. And I was sitting right where you are. And... A, a Sunday morning, and I felt like God said to me, I'm going to touch you. 
And I don't know exactly when he touched me. That must have been uh, three, two, three months ago. But I haven't had an irregular heartbeat, not even once since then. And God really, he really did touch me. So, glory to God. <laughs> Thank you, Bruce. Yeah, come on down. You, gotta, you don't got to wait for me. We got Jesse. Hello? Is this on? Can you hear me? Okay. Um, so, it's been a pretty stressful summer um, for us. My... Um, summer job um when i went to go see if they were good with me working for them they uh, informed me that they didn't need me for the summer so all of our year plans uh crashed and we had no support for the entire summer um and so it was very stressful for us and we were trying to figure out um how we were going to make it through we only had enough for about half the summer and so um a few weeks ago during one of the worship uh, times. I forgot who was bringing it up, but they were, um, God put it on their heart to have us respond to uh, financial need and to raise your hand if you had any financial need. And of course, me being stubborn, I wasn't going to raise my hand. And I heard God uh, tell me that I needed to submit and I needed to humble myself. So I raised my hand and uh, had some great guys come pray for me that week. Um, summer job called and filled up the second half, the last half of the summer. Um, I got another job opportunity for evenings. And then another friend provided a gig for me that paid for that month that we were struggling with. And then um, just recently, Aaron's been looking for work. Um, she was praying to God for an opportunity um, to be able to reconnect with one of the doctors that she cliniced with. And the next day, an opportunity popped up for her to apply for that. Then it dropped, and we uh, had a little bit of a heartbreak moment where we thought we lost the opportunity. And so the next day, I was praising God, humbling myself again, worshiping him, and praying for an opportunity. And later that day, the recruiter connected with Aaron, and she's moving on to the next stage of that. We're just happy for that opportunity, um, whether or not it turns into anything else. And uh, it's just a constant reminder of how much God responds uh, to our prayers. I mean, <laughs> yeah, yesterday... Aaron was picking up some medicine, and LMA was in the back seat. She just, I hear her pray, God, please make it rain. <laughs> and I looked at my phone, and I said, like, LMA, I'm sorry, there's, there's no rain in the fork, but God hears you. It might happen. I'm sorry, for every guy, everyone last night, with all that downpour, that was LMA's fault. <laughs> But it's been just a summer of pressure guiding us and correcting us and worshiping God and him showing us every step of the way that he's providing for us and he really does have us. Amen. I hope the sound sounds okay. <laughs> sound guys out of the booth. <laughs> Oh, perfect. Oh, I don't like being up here. Uh, <clears throat> uh, so two years ago, um, one year ago, sorry. <laughs> uh, um, Halen had a really terrible accident. Our two-year-old. Our two-year-old, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, this is really hard. <laughs> Uh, and so we've just been reflecting on that and like, if you know me, you know that my family means everything to me. It's the reason I get up and go to work every day and why I work so hard. Um, and so that, oh, golly. <laughs> 
that 20 something days, 24 days that my family was torn apart, <clears throat> it really, really rocked me. And I remember leaving the hospital every night wondering if Mal or Halen was gonna make it. And then waking, or not even waking up in the morning, or waking up from an hour worth of sleep because I was, I was crying to God in my bed, like, take me, give me this problem. Like, I'll, I'll, I'll gladly take her place. Um, And so he must have heard those prayers because you couldn't even tell that anything has happened to her. She's still the bundle of joy. And I just, I have this overwhelming sense of just like gratitude towards God. And I, I, there's nothing I can do other than worship him and sing out these songs that we're singing and, and feel that, like really feel like thankful that he is here for us regardless of what we do or, or, or where we come from or who we are or our past or anything. God is there. He is right there knocking at the door, gently waiting for us to just open it. <sighs> this was his idea, so... Um, <laughs> I was actually wrestling with it all day, thinking, like, I don't, I mean, like, yes, like, we're thankful. Like, I don't, I don't know that there was a miracle that happened. Like, there wasn't this, like, touch from God that she just miraculously was better the next day. Like, it was 24 days in the hospital, and it was hard. And I questioned God, and I, like, argued with him in the hospital every night, like, with her, and just wondered, like, when is this going to end? When, um, yeah, and so even just today, thinking about it and reflecting on it and just thinking, like, I don't know, like, and this is the devil, like, like what's the testimony here? I mean, like, doctors were there, and that was great. Like, the injuries she had, like, thank God we're in this decade, this century or whatever, that there are doctors that knew exactly what to do because 50 years ago, 100 years ago, she would have died. And like, I thank God and I praise God for that. But also it's just like, I don't know, like, what about the other people that whatever? Okay. So <laughs> in worship, um, just now I, like God reminded me <laughs> and this goes way back. So, um, I, we had had a miscarriage and then three months later, I got pregnant with Halen. And 14 weeks in, we thought we lost her. Same exact thing happened. We didn't rush to the emergency room that time. We went all weekend thinking, she's gone. And we got um, to the doctor then on Monday, and I'm staring at the ceiling just thinking, I know exactly what the tech is going to say when she brings up the ultrasound like I already know. And... So I didn't even look. And, you know, she starts the ultrasound, and she's like, there's baby. And just, like, like that weekend, I questioned God more than I've ever questioned him. And so the fact that, like, like the redemptive quality of God and, like, <laughs> these things that we're giving to him, like, I, you have no power over protecting this babe inside of you and so like God just took that and said like you might not think it but I care more <laughs> about this child of yours than you do than you do and and just thinking about that in regard to like everything that happened last summer with this same child that like God has something for her because he just keeps redeeming he keeps bringing us to places where we say God what are you what are you doing? How could you do this? And then he's like, I got it. Like, I'm holding it. I have it. And um, sorry, I wrote a couple things down. <laughs> um, so yeah, like, I just, like, the thing, even in, like, our lives, aside from my own child, you know, like, just thinking about, like, if there are things that you guys think that you've lost, 
I mean, just remember that like God sees that and cares about that even more than you do, and he's invested more into it than you do. And so, yeah, thankful. That's good. Thank you, Chuck. Thank you, Carissa. Okay. I didn't expect to do this. Let's go, Dave. I did not expect this. This is not, this is not scripted, and I don't do stand-up comedy. <laughs> but I had an incident that happened last week. Some of you know that I, I lost my wife in 2016 to a heart attack. And Ryan, my son, and LaShonda, who was here now and then, and two kids lived with us. And when my wife had her heart attack, she did LaShonda was downstairs. She didn't even think to get her because they, they butted heads. And I've had such anger at her, like, how could you do this? You know, you didn't like my wife. My wife didn't like you. And this happened. But last week... She came to Jesus. And the healing process, it wasn't, I had, you got to do this for me because you're you're at fault. No, God's looking at me and saying, I'm going to heal you now. I'm going to start the process. So I'm just looking forward to it. Amen. Beautiful. Beautiful. Thank you, Dave. So good. That's amazing. Thank you, Dave. Yeah. Who else? Quick encouragement. Last time, I think it was Karina shared, and she she shared how God had already moved, and yet there was still more to be done. Wonder if there's somebody else in that space. TJ's coming down. <laughs> Leah's on deck. Uh, that thank you for that lead-in. That's exactly my story. Is the little bit of faith to go. Um, I had a job for 22 years that gave me um, financial ability and uh, PTO flexibility to do a lot of ministry, and I got laid off about two years ago from that, and. God provided another job, but I took a pretty significant pay cut and vacation cut and really kind of struggled with feeling diminished in ability to do ministry and be generous and um, never really felt like that was the long-term thing. And this year had a couple opportunities come up, one of which in February and March that would have been close to the money I had been making previously, but just there were some red flags and kind of a moment of trusting God that it's okay to let this one go. And uh, I think in hindsight, that was God's will (laughs) that I maybe dodged a little bit of a bullet there. Um, But then the waiting continued until later this summer, and I got another call from a guy starting a a company who is a believer, um, and he offered more money than I was asking for. And the the not yet part is I, I actually haven't been paid yet, I'm hoping that will eventually come here. Uh, it's one of those startup company things where, you know, we're still kind of working on the pieces, but, um, but God has been faithful in providing a culture where it's, it's okay to be a Christian. It's, it's okay to have um, time to do ministry, and I'm looking forward to God kind of um, renewing our family finances, which have been hurting a little bit lately, and just having the, the freedom to get back and doing the ministry that I love, so... Pray that I do get paid someday. Uh, it's too late, Leah. <laughs> well, Tim should probably come up here because he's better at all this. But um, we um, we have been in a process this summer of. Um, potentially buying a house. (laughs) And um, it's kind of one of those things where over the winter I was feeling like, Lord, I feel like we're at capacity here, but I, you know, I can be thankful for what I have and um, you can work and give me wisdom and, and, you know, how to manage my resources here. 
And um, some friends came to us and they said, we have this house that we want you to buy. And we're like, okay. And um, we've been just praying about it throughout the summer, helping them fix it because it's a big project. And um, just praying like, Lord, show us, please. Show us what you have for us. And um, it's been really cool how he's been just speaking to us. And um, things that should have fallen through haven't fallen through. So we're like, okay. And we're just, you know, taking the next step and trusting him. And a couple weeks ago, I felt like he said to me, um, you've been asking for wisdom and now you need to start asking for provision. <laughs> I'm like, okay. <laughs> so that's what we've been praying. And I've been um, <clears throat> a little bit of a crabby wife and mom. And um, I, I've, I've wanted to put the house on the market like before now. It hasn't happened yet. And I'm just getting a little antsy. And um, we're hoping to put the house on the market next week. And during worship, the Lord just said to me, you know, it's no coincidence that you're putting your house on the market the week of fasting and prayer. So I'm like, okay, thanks, Lord. Um, it just was a check. Like, I got this. I've got the timing. So definitely uh, God is leading. God is directing. Sometimes it feels like there are more questions than answers, but he is guiding us, and we're trusting him for the rest of the story. <laughs> so. Amen. Thank you, Leah. Hello, come share your name. Hi, I know like three people in this room. <laughs> so uh, my name's Kaylee. This is my first time actually here. Um, yeah. But uh, so long story short, my life has been very transient. It's a very, very long, confusing story. Um, but long story short, like I don't stay places longer than like 10 months. That's been my life since I was a kid. And you just kind of move, and my adult life has been kind of the same thing. I've done some different things here and there. And um, coming up here in like three weeks, I'll have been in Minneapolis for a year at North Central, which is like a miracle in itself. Again, lots of God stories in my entire life, right? Um, and long story short, I'm going to keep saying that because everything's a long story. Um, me even being at North Central is a miracle in itself. When I graduated high school in 2018, going to college was in the cards for me, so I went into ministry, which was great. Um, but then fast forward five years, I'm 23 going, well, what do I do now? God opened the door and I went to North Central, um, essentially on all scholarship, which was something that like somebody who statistically should be dead doesn't get. Um, and then coming up at the end of this, uh, this like semester, spring semester into the summer, um, I had like a, a student like account thing where I had, still had money to pay. Um, and so I, which was like fees and room and board, like the things that you don't think about, you know, when they're like, here's a scholarship. It doesn't necessarily cover those things. Um, and so God had already been like providing, but I went into the summer not expecting to be able to return back to school. Um, I was like, okay, God, like 10 months, like we're going to make it that far, but then like what's next? Um, and this summer has been like really abnormal weird in the sense that like there's so many moments where like Satan tried to come and attack the, the safety of the community that I have now, um, which if you knew my story, you would know how much like that safety matters. And in the last six weeks, financially, it's been impossible for me to return to school. Like, I've wanted to. I actually decided, like, oh, staying in one place would be a really good thing. Um, and then I was like, oh, snap, what am I going to do if I can't go back to school? I lived in my car a few years ago. Um, and sadly, that's something where my brain goes back to. It's like, well, at least I have a car. Like, I can do that. I know I can. Um, and then, like, a few weeks ago, I, like, was doing my budget, and there was an extra, like, few hundred dollars. I have no idea where it came from. Like, I'm, like, backtracking my bank account to make sure I didn't, like, miss a bill. And it was there. And so I was able to afford to, like, do fun things, like, go to camp, which I 
when Pastor Miranda like asked me like if I wanted to go, I was like, huh, I get back to you because I was like, I can't afford that. That was impossible. And I could. And at camp, even though I was there for the students, God like did some stuff in my heart. And I came back this week and I was like, I still don't know if I can go to school. I don't know. And somehow, some way, uh, I was like in a meeting, sorry that this is a long story, <laughs> um, but I was in a meeting with somebody from financial aid a couple days ago and she said, no, Kaylee, like look at the numbers. She goes, you haven't been like maybe mentally keeping track of what you've been paying, but you're gonna be able to return to school. And I was like, I almost started crying in the office because I was like, I get to return to school, I'll be somewhere longer than it, like 10 months, like I'm gonna be okay. And then yesterday, so I do like graphic design, like freelance to kind of survive in the world. That's kind of what I do. I do school on my computer. I work on my computer. I make videos on my computer. My computer is kind of my lifeline. And yesterday it crashed, like crash, crashed. And I was like, okay, I'm a techie. I should know how to fix this. And I tried everything. And I did all the Googling it could do. Same thing today, like another weird thing that I've never seen happen on computers happened before, and I work with computers, so you would think I would know how to fix the computer. And long story short, I couldn't fix it. I took it to Apple, and I just told Pastor Randall when I came in today, I was like, I got a new computer. But the crazy thing isn't the fact that I got a computer. The God thing is that when I went in to the Apple store, I was going in simply because I was like, I don't know what to do. And then I left the Apple store over the first time in tears going, they said I needed a new computer. What do I do when I don't have any money for anything, let alone a new computer? And Satan tried kind of like getting into my heart saying like, mm, see, you're gonna have to leave. Like all of these little lies were coming in my heart at the time and in my mind saying like, you tried too hard for nothing. You thought something changed, mm, psych, not that. And um, something in my heart told me to call um, some very special people in my life. Um, they're, long story short, my adopted grandparents. It was my mom's Sunday school teacher from when she was seven years old. <laughs> and I called her in tears, and I, we called her Grand Jan. And I said, Grand Jan, I'm done. Like, I, yeah, I can't make it anymore. I can't, like, and I didn't call expecting for help or anything. And she said, hey, um, Papa Jim and I knew this was coming. She said, uh, we want you to know, like, we see that you're trying. You're going to make it. She goes, we want you to know, like, we believe in you. We're proud of you. And almost every single thing that Satan had put in my mind, like, in those minutes from walking to the store to my car, she was like, we see you. And something told us a couple months ago that this time was coming. And she said, we're going to take care of it. Go back in. Get your computer. Because at the end of the day, you staying in school, you having a job is more important than money. And I don't understand that concept necessarily, but what I do understand is that like, like even just during worship, it like everything just kind of like hit me in one sweep was that like, Satan's gonna try everything in his power to make it impossible for me to do what I'm called to do. Even though my life might have looked a little differently, like he's got it taken care of. And so like, it may be a new computer, but for me, that's like, it's groceries and it's housing and it's everything else that God prepared way before my computer even crashed. Yeah, that's it. Thank you for sharing, Kaylee. We're so happy that you're here. And for someone who should be, statistically should be dead, we're happy that you're here. Happy you're here. Thank you for sharing your story. The band's going to come up, and for a few minutes, they're just going to play some pretty music behind us. We, ha we have some time for a couple more. People want to share their testimonies. Lisa Joe, Welcome. Thank you. It's been a hot minute since I've been here. Um, don't see me much on Sundays, but I love First Wednesdays, so please never stop doing that. Um, okay, I have so many God stories. I have so many, and Pastor Michelle asked me a long time ago to look back in my life to, and to 
just reflect on my childhood and my teenage life and just to see where, to see if I look back now, if I could see God. And he was everywhere. I had never done that before, but he was literally everywhere. I see the people he put in my place, my mentor, who changed the trajectory of my life. I lost touch with her, and she had a really difficult name, Shirley Matuseski. I had no idea how to even spell it. Bev helped me find her, and it had been a really long time since I had seen her, and we got together and we had coffee. And I just didn't know when I first called her and reached out to her if she would even remember me. I made the assumption that she probably mentored a lot of women, a lot of young girls, and she had not She had only mentored me. <laughs> but all of the catching up that we did, the one thing that she was literally waiting in pins and needles to hear is if I came to Christ. And when I told her that I did, we both lost it. <laughs> You just never know who's planting those seeds and who's praying for you and for the length of time that they're praying for you. And if you are praying for somebody and it just feels like it's never going to happen, just keep praying. I ask this church all the time to pray for my son. He's still in active addiction. He's still out on the streets. The streets are taking a terrible toll on his physical being, but he's alive because I know you're praying for him, because I'm praying for him. His story was what I was gonna come down here and talk about, and out of my mouth came my story about Shirley. (laughs) That's God, that's it. God, praise God. Yeah, I think sometimes we try to think of a testimony and, a, and something God has done and nothing comes to mind. And then you think through your past and then it, all of a sudden it's, how can I pick just one? Is there one more? Becky, I want to introduce you all to my friend Becky. Come on up. Go ahead. Thank you for your church. It's just so much blessing. Um, I just wanted to share a little thing, but actually to me it's not a little thing, but um, um, I I was living in a house in Ridgefield at the upper part of an attic that was finished off, and the lady had to sell her house, and so I had to move. Um, and and so trying to find a place was very frustrating as she she will and anyway um and so um i had looked everywhere down and what i could afford was way out in stillwater and jordan and forest lake and all over and i couldn't really um get anything in in the cities here and um so then it was a wednesday night and i sat down at my desk and i was so frustrated and i just said God, I can't do this anymore. It's just too much. The, I can't find any place that I can afford. And and everything. And so then the next morning, and I, it just was God because on my phone was an uh, email from a place in Maplewood. And, and I said, okay, I'll call. It's not going to work anyway, but I'll call. And, um, and I called there and she, see, and because uh, I had seen the studio apartments there, it was what I could afford. And, um, and so she said, well, we just have a guy that's moving out June 1st, and that's when I had to be out of my, my house. And um, so I, I went over that afternoon and saw it, and I just loved it. And so we went down, it was on um, 106, and um, I said, um, I love it. And so the lady, Carrie, who was showing me around, she said, let's go to the office and tell Sandy, the manager, that you want it. So we went to the office, and um, and we came in there, and Carrie said, she wants it, sign her up. And then Sandy's standing there, and she said, 
a guy decided not to move out till July 1st. And my heart just sunk and they were sad and everything. And, and then she, Sandy, sat down at her desk. She goes, oh my, oh my. She said, I just want to let you know that studio apartments do not come hardly ever. And she said, but 307 just opened up. And that's where I'm living now is 307. <laughs> God is so good to provide this home for me. And then, because I moved here, I came to this church, yes. <laughs> love it. I love it. All right, so we're going to move back into a time of worship. So we'll bring down the lights, and I invite you all to stand and praise with us. And we're going to sing a song, and then we're going to have some specific time for prayer. But during this first song, I just invite you, if you are praying for God to move, like in one of these ways, if you're encouraged by these stories and you're, you're waiting for the answer to your question, the, the good ending to your story, I just, I, I encourage you, don't wait to worship tonight. Just come on down. We want to cover you with prayer. We want to pray for you. We want to pray alongside you. Um, but I'm just going to hand it back to the worship team. We're just going to, we're going to sing.